Ahoy there, this is Chief Bones, and thanks for joining me again. Today we're talking about IJN Kaga. She's a Tier 8 premium aircraft carrier who's been around for a while Puppy. and has a brand new Azure Lane Commander to go along with her. As with all the new aircraft carriers, she has three different types of strike aircraft. She has the A6M50 as her attack aircraft, the B6N Tenzan torpedo bombers, and the D4Y3 Suisse bombers. One major difference between her and all the other Tier 8 aircraft carriers, including the other Tier 8 premiums, is that she has an absolutely ludicrous amount of aircraft. Because all of her aircraft are significantly weaker, it's really interesting to see that when she throws up, say, a torpedo squadron, you're going to see 12 planes in that squadron instead of 5, 6, 8, however many that is. She also carries a significantly higher amount of aircraft on her top deck. The real downside, however, is that these aircraft are really low hit point aircraft. They're really slow and they're not particularly durable and the fact is you absolutely must have those massive amounts of aircraft in order to pull anything off. But having that large number of aircraft in each squadron does have its advantages. Unlike every other tier 8 aircraft carrier, her torpedo planes can actually throw 4 torpedoes per salvo as opposed to 2 or 3. Her bombers aren't particularly great, they're not particularly fast, but they have a decent fire chance and they do okay damage. They're not as brutal as, say, the Enterprise or the Graf Zeppelin's AP bombs, but they can cause significant damage to a lightly armored target. And with enough airstrikes and enough patience, you can farm quite a bit of damage off of battleships or cause significant damage and sink some of your smaller cruisers. But because of the absolute mediocrity of her bombers and her rockets in particular, don't expect to be doing massive amounts of burst damage to any particular ship. This ship's strongest squadron is going to be its torpedo squadrons. This is why I always start out my matches using the torpedo squadrons. They're not particularly fast and they're not particularly agile, but being able to start your match with a squadron of 12 planes and throwing four torpedoes per salvo, it's a great way to start off the match. One other positive is that their torpedo planes have really small detectability, so you can get within just a couple of kilometers before anybody actually sees your torpedo planes. That gives you an advantage where you don't have to worry quite so much about AA opening up and ripping you to shreds before you get to your intended target or while you're spotting in advance of the rest of your team. And let's be absolutely clear, if you're a carrier player, one of your biggest responsibilities at this point in the time with this meta is to be your primary spotter for your team. Destroyers have been somewhat marginalized in that aspect. Things have gotten somewhat better with the adjustments to the overall spotting range that uh, Wargaming has done since the 0.8.0 update, but I mean, be real. Carriers are still primary spotters. I mean, they always have been, but for some reason, for some reason, they seem to be a little bit better at it now than they used to, despite having less planes Puppy. available. That said, this is not a video about the uh, aircraft carrier rework or the 0.8 point whatever updates. Um, this is specifically about Kaga since the update. So with this video, uh, I'd like to point out that while this is one of my quote-unquote Maiden Voyages videos, this is not even close to my first match in Kaga. I've been playing Kaga since she first came out uh, two years ago. And back then, back when she first came out, her, her primary gimmick, I guess it was, or her, her flavor that made her different from the other premium aircraft carriers of that time, was as a, at that time, tier 7 carrier, she had the staggered torpedo drops. That is to say, rather than having several torpedoes in a single row, she had two rows, a row of three and a row of two. Now the whole idea of that was to give her slightly different angles on her drops and make it a little more difficult for other uh, ships to avoid her torpedoes. She was not particularly strong at the time, but she was fun and somewhat unique. Now she's a little more 
average. She still plays differently from the other carriers, and a lot of that has to do with the amount of available aircraft. But there's not a whole lot, really, that separates her. Um, her effectiveness is still pretty decent. She doesn't have the OP planes of, say, the Saipan, or the OP secondaries of the Graf Zeppelin, or the insane rockets of Enterprise. But she's still quite a solid carrier, and the only thing I probably personally would do to improve upon Kaga and make her a little bit more competitive would be to increase her AA suite just a little bit. You look at uh, carriers like Lexington or Implacable at tier 8 and you see carriers whose built-in anti-air defenses are just overwhelming and can eat an entire squadron of enemy planes alive. And Kaga, if you were to take her squadrons against a Lexington or an Implacable or even the Enterprise, which has significantly less AA than Implacable or Lexington, you're going to probably lose your entire squadron against these guys because as was said before their their overall HP is somewhat lacking and their speed is not particularly great. In contrast to that, if you were to take an Enterprise or a Graf Zeppelin or an Implacable and have those planes attack a Kaga, chances are you're going to get a couple of hits, possibly even a couple of uh, attack runs as opposed to the initial attack run and then the remainder of your squadron dying, as is usually the case with Kaga. But if that sounds like I'm complaining or that I think uh, there's something wrong with Kaga, don't, don't take it that way. That's absolutely not the truth. Kaga is, in fact, one of my favorite carriers in the current carrier meta. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I like having tons of planes on deck. Even if I know that these planes are not particularly powerful, and I'm probably going to lose most of, if not all of my squadron every time I launch it, the fact is I've always got planes to spare. And much like with my preferred destroyer, which is going to be a Japanese torpedo boat, my Japanese torpedo planes help me to be that spotting monster that I like to be. A lot of my points are going to come off of spotting damage, not personal damage. Though this match that you're seeing right here is a pretty solid match. Not, not just in spotting damage, but in overall damage done. That said, I have cut the video short. Um, after a bit, it gets kind of redundant. And you'll get to see the end result, but you're not going to have to sit through the whole match if you don't want to. One thing that does bother me a little bit about Kaga, and all the new aircraft carriers for that matter, is that you don't have as much of the dots hitting as you would with a cruiser or a destroyer with their torpedoes and HE. Um, fire starting and flooding seems to be an afterthought and while they made it a point to nerf alpha strike damage a bit particularly because of how carriers were absolutely manhandling destroyers. Um, it just feels like, even though you can have really good matches with a carrier, uh, and with this carrier, it, you're not getting a lot of that damage over time that you would expect to get with these particular types of weaponry. You have firebombs, you expect to start fires. You have torpedoes, you expect to start floods. At this point in the match, I've made 20 
torpedo hits and gotten only three floods. That's just over one in seven. Just under one in seven. Something like that. I don't know. Math is hard. I can't math. But I've landed, you know, several bombs and I've gotten several less fires than one might expect that I would. And it's, it's kind of saddening because a lot of my damage should be coming from damage over time. That is what bombs and torpedoes have always been all about. But let's not just talk about bombs and torpedoes. Let's also talk about the attack aircraft. Now, the Kaga squadrons as a whole are not as fast as, say, Enterprise, right? And although their zeros are not as slow as Graf Zeppelin's attack planes, they're still not particularly quick. And on the topic of the attack planes, I don't much care for the solid circle reticle that the Kaga's attack planes have. It makes it very difficult to have a solid strike and you have to really get your aim down good and fast before you can let your rockets off, particularly on a destroyer. Now the torpedo planes aim pretty quick and they close pretty narrow once they start closing in pretty quick and they go flat trajectory wise and the bombers have that nice kind of thin narrow drop so you can come up onto a ship and if you're going straight from their prow or straight from their stern you can land basically your entire drop from stem to stern but significantly less so from the sides the rockets the rockets are just round and weird like that but it's okay i mean it's not terrible Toasty! Okay, so let's just talk about the Kaga real quick, my, my overall impressions. I think she's fun. She is quite capable of dealing decent damage, even in a bottom tier match. And let's be honest, tier 8 matchmaking is not kind to carriers anymore. But uh, yeah, I like her. She's got a good setup. A lot of planes, quick reload, a lot of fish, good ship. Hey, thanks for dropping by. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications. Like, comment, let me know what you'd like to see from us next. You have a good one, and we'll see you next time.